Hello, uh, my name is Łukasz Siewierski and I'm working with uh, CERT Polska. I'm also a member of Polish chapter of the HoneyNet project and you may know me from the registration desk. Uh, <laughs> um, and today I will talk to you about uh, a little project that we started in, uh, in Polish chapter. Um, some time ago uh, we had uh, acquired two honey boxes. Honey boxes are devices based on uh, triple E Asus PCs. Uh, if you don't know what is it, what 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 is it? It's uh, well small PC basically uh, with two gigs of RAM. And the idea was that uh, it will be a honeypot uh, that we will distribute among uh, any interested parties and it will be simple to uh, connect it to their network and it will also provide the data for us, for the researchers and uh, and we will be able to uh, well distribute this data. So uh, what we did, what I did, is that we uh, connected these uh, honey boxes and honey pots uh, to HP friends or HP feed um, it's uh, for those of you who don't know. It's a service that allows you to exchange any kind of information uh, with people you basically like. So uh, it's rather like Facebook. So you can exchange data with people you know, and you can add them to your distribution lists, and they can exchange data with you. Very nice service uh, provided by the HoneyNet project. Uh, so this is the point of entry for all the researchers. They get their raw data from the honey boxes. Um, we uh, also in CERT Polska have a platform called N6. Uh, it's short for ne Network Security Incident Exchange. Uh, this platform uh, connects to HP Friends and downloads all the data both from our honey boxes and from, well, uh, the honeypots that share data with us uh, through, uh, through HP Friends. And this uh, platform is, is used to exchange this information with administrators and uh, ISPs. Uh, it filters the data, it filters the IP, IPs basically, and gives the infected IPs to the, uh, the appropriate uh, ISP that is uh, that uh, well has an account in N6. These accounts are free. Uh, any ISP or administrator can uh, can participate in this exchange, and uh, well, they get the information they need. So they get the IPs and uh, uh, and and the infected hosts and and some information about what the infection is and what to do about it. Um, so it first started with honey boxes. Uh, we also um, acquired, uh, well, one of the hosting providers decided that they want to give us some infrastructure to put a honeybox in, uh, well, honeypot in there. So uh, we didn't send a physical honeybox, we just uh, put it there. Uh, we also, in our lab, in our uh, autonomous system, we also don't use the physical one. We, uh, we just have a dedicated machine for this. And in this way, we were able to uh, put honeypots in six different autonomous systems. Uh, five of them are in Poland. Uh, there are big ISPs, there are smaller ISPs, uh, well, every, every sort of them. We also uh, were able to uh, well, send one of the honeyboxes to university, so uh, they also were willing to participate. S uh, something about our setup, uh, we use Debian on all machines. Uh, for the honeypots, we use Kippo SSH honeypot. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's uh, basically uh, what what it says is an S SSH honeypot that lets you uh, connect with uh, with the host and pretends it's it, you have an SSH session. Um, but what we what we did observe, there was a problem with. Uh, with this that many of the connections requested SFTP support. They just wanted to upload a binary or something else, some text files or something. And uh, we used a uh, Kippo fork. It's available on GitHub. If you type in into Google Kippo SFTP, uh, it will probably show up. 
Uh, it has an SFTP support. It has al also some other features uh, which are interesting. And with this, we had uh, a much better result uh, because, well, almost half of our connections requested SFTP once they uh, once they knew the password. Uh, we also used Dionia Honeypot. Dionia Honeypot is uh, really uh, well a vast honeypot. It can emulate Samba. It can emulate Voice over IP, HTTP, HTTPS, uh, FTP, TFTP, Microsoft SQL, and MySQL. And uh, well, we had some success success with it. Uh, it was mainly well worms, as you will see. And it was mainly Samba, but and uh, Voice over IP. Um, but this setup completes the most popular services that you see uh, around the internet these days. Um, these are some statistics that uh, we uh, were able to uh, capture for about one month. It's a little over one mo one month. Um, these are Dionia samples. You can call it that. Um, so the distinct URLs, uh, it's the URLs that were provided in the in the shell code. Unique samples, it's basically uh, samples and distinct IPs that uh, were connecting. And you can see the ge geographical profile of the connections. Uh, and second one, a slightly different geographical profile, um, are statistics from Kippo, SSH Hanepot. There were uh more evenly distributed however uh, significantly lower number of uh, ips uh, connected to kippo and here are some most popular passwords this is a, a really nice feature of uh, kippo honeypot uh, that uh, well you can set a password and uh, basically if the attacker uh, tries to penetrate your ssh uh, it will to use dictionary attack and will provide you with some passwords. And if you are lucky, it will provide you with whole dictionary of his passwords uh, so we can save it. These are the most popular passwords. Second one is empty. It's not, uh, it's not an error. Uh, so if you have any of these passwords, maybe consider a change. Uh, if, you <laughs> if you use SSH password, maybe you should also consider changing it to <laughs> something more secure. Um, OK, so what we were able to obtain from Dionia Honeypot, it was mainly, as I mentioned, Samba, uh, and mainly popular worms like Config, Sality, etc. There were some autorun in files, like this one here. Uh, well, it's used to, uh, to start some uh, executable when you when you try to open network share. Uh, what is interesting, we also uh, saw a PS exec. It's a sysinternals uh, tool that um, is meant to replace Telnet. It allows you to execute code on a remote machine. Uh, it's not a malicious application. It, it's a benign one, but it can be used for malicious purposes. And the uh, samples detection rates were high, even very high, uh, something uh, uh, more than 40 out of 50 um, AV, uh, AVs. But um, may maybe the samples are not the interesting part. The IPs that were connecting and were distributing the, uh, the samples are more uh, interesting because, uh, well, we these IPs are probably infected, so they uh, tend to provide some information to the administrators um, of the autonomous systems. So this was mainly an, uh, an information tool. And for the SSH, what we were able to obtain was uh, DDoS bots, or bot, it was one family, but was uh, very, um, very frequently updated. Uh, they were multi-platform, uh, of course, because it was SSH, we, are, uh, we were able to obtain the, uh, the sample dedicated to Unix. And there were also samples for Windows, which we were, to, were able to obtain by 
uh, using other sources, they were using the same CNC and the port was in the same ra range. Um, it wasn't a very sophisticated tool. It sometimes was UPX packed, sometimes wasn't. Uh, it w wasn't stripped, so you have all the debugging information, and it had a uh, really, really nice object-oriented design in C++. Uh, it was also linked statically, uh, so you don't have to install any libraries. Um, the distribution of it was that uh, it was f first uh, uh, reconnaissance was performed by brute forcing the SSH using different passwords, and when it finally reached the uh, appropriate password, uh, the brute forcing stopped, and sometime after that, um, the attackers tried to upload an SFTP uh, binary or binaries and, uh, well, a cron file sometimes. Uh, upon running, this, uh, this bot gathered all the system information and sent it back to the, the command and control. Uh, the system information were mainly uh, concerning the IPs, the uh, network capacities of the of the host, and uh, system version, something like that. Uh, then it waited for the DDoS orders. It had uh, various uh, uh, DDoSs implemented, some successfully, some not not so successfully some were to be implemented because there were empty functions uh, some were deleted it was very frequently updated so i didn't follow all, all it all through um it had also automatic updates updates via cron i will show in a minute how it works and the persistence was achieved using uh, etc rx uh, scripts and or cron so it crea created a symbolic link uh, and had an in it script. Uh, so this is some cron magic from this uh, DDoS bot. Uh, first, it killed uh, some processes. I wasn't able to uh, identify them. I think there were old versions of this malware, but maybe not. Uh, then it used a rather interesting comment to clear logs. Uh, this is uh, well. This is a snippet from the cron file. There were a lot of other uh, entries for kilol and for clearing logs and so on. Uh, there was an unset mail check added to etc profile. This was done to prevent the uh, you have unread mail when the administrator logs into SSH, and uh, it was uh, well appended at the end of the file. Uh, every minute, so the file can grow pretty big after some time, and you have a lot of unset mail check at the end of it. Uh, then it killed the uh, the bot, uh, removed the no hub because it it was run using no hub. Uh, then it uh, downloaded the new version of the bot and well ran it again using no hub, and then created uh, and then destroyed the the bash history file and all the other files and uh, well logs. Uh, yeah, the Windows version of this uh, of this uh, DDoS bot um, was different. Well, the system is different. It installed uh, it unpacked first in the somewhere in the Windows directories uh, and installed a system service that were to start upon uh, boot up. So, and, but the files that it created, it created the log files, they were the same as the, uh, as the Unix version, the CNC was the same, the protocol was the same, everything was the same, so it most definitely was the same, uh, the same bot. So, uh, just to sum up, uh, I think it's worth uh, having a honeypot in your network, if you do, uh, if you don't, please uh, do so. If you have, uh, or you think you have a better setup than than we do, please uh, send a mail to me. I will gladly update our setup or, uh, well, um, advise you. Uh, and uh, yeah, so and if you are from Poland and you want to give us some infrastructure, uh, we will glad gladly install a honeypot in your system and give you all the data and probably share uh, 
all our data with you uh, if you are a researcher. And well, thank you. Did you do anything specific to attract anyone to come in, or did you just set them up and wait? Well, no, we could, you, could you use the microphone and repeat the question? Sure, sure. Uh, the question was, did we do anything specific to attract the uh, attackers, or did we just wait? Well, uh, we just waited because there was a lot of traffic coming, especially from the, our university partner. So, uh, well, we had a problem al already with it, so we didn't. Uh, advertise it yet. Okay, thank you. Thank you.